What's going on everybody? Jemmin here back again with another omnibus and comic book haul. Usually it's just the omnis, but I have a stack of comics that I bought and I'll explain to you why. Just real quick, I want to thank Marvel Comics as always for sending us some advanced copies of these omnibus and trade paperbacks. We're going to go through some overhead shots, take a deep dive look. But before we do that, I'm going to explain why I have these comics here. So uh, as you saw in the thumbnail, the Frank Miller Wolverine set, issues one through four. I ended up picking these up on Whatnot. As you guys know, uh, Whatnot is a sponsor on the channel, and I sell on Whatnot once a week, every Wednesday. And I mentioned that if you guys sign up to Whatnot through my link, that you'll get $10 towards your first purchase, and then I'll get a $10 credit. So that credit built up, and I can't just transfer it to my bank account. It's there for me to use on the app. So basically, I went shopping for, for inventory. I picked up this Batgirl issues one, two, three, and six, I believe, from the new 52 Gail Simone run. So I thought those would be cool. Picked up the Wolverines from Skeleton Key Comics. Got uh, some Moon Knight action, Moon Knight issue five. These were like uh, from mystery boxes that I was trying to win, like their uh, uh, slab that they had for a giveaway. So this is new X Men 22 and Legion 29. So that was from a mystery box. I think that was from my man B. Caven. Shout out to him. Uh, I picked up this Scorched Issue 3 Todd McFarlane variant. This pays homage to Jim Lee's X-Men 1. Very cool. Here's another Moon Knight book. Uh, this is Moon Knight Issue 21. Thought it was a cool cover. Moon Knight. First episode came out today. Uh, got this Hulk vs. Thing. Uh, Joe Jusco variant for Immortal Hulk 50. I have this as a personal copy, but I picked this up anyway uh, to sell on whatnot. Some... 10 Deaths, 10 Lives of Wolverine variants. And I picked up some Carnage 1 variants uh, because I really liked the issue by Rom V. So there's a, a Bagley variant, a Ron Lim variant. F feels like it's going to be a cool series. Then we have a, another Joe Jusco. This is a Captain America uh, a issue 1 variant by Jusco. And then we have Spawn 327, which is the Haunt Spider-Man 1 homage. So... I am going to end up selling those over on Whatnot. Make sure to follow me on there. Like I said, links in the description. You'll get the $10 credit and all that. Uh, that's the comic book haul. Let's jump into the omnibus and the trade paperback. We have Doctor Strange. This is Sorcerer Supreme Volume 3 finishing off the longest ongoing Doctor Strange series that started in the late 80s and continued on through the 90s. Let's take a look at it. All right, guys, since this is the third volume, I thought I would show you guys volumes one, two, and three all together and how they look. And of course, we got to do a spine check. All right, guys, so here are the spines. So it does change a little bit, but it still goes with the entire flow. Like it was just meant to do that. So good job on the spines for the most part here. So this is the regular cover that's done by Peter Gross. There is a direct market variant, as you can see here, by Mark Buckingham. Here is the entire dust jacket, and you can see the back with what this collects. Doctor Strange, Sorcerer Supreme 60 through 90 with Annual 4. Strange Tales 1 from 1994. Midnight Suns Unlimited Issue 6. Doctor Strange, What Is It That Disturbs You, Steven? Untold Tales of Spider-Man. Strange Encounter. Doctor Strange, Sorcerer Supreme Ashcan Edition. And it has some material from Marvel Comics Presents 146. $125 cover price with 1,088 pages. Gives us a little bit of where we're at in the story to the left and a biography on the creators to the right. The hardcover of the book matches the dust jacket and it gives us that DM variant image on the back just in case you missed out on it. And this book is scheduled to come out next month on April 27th. So maybe pre-order it if you like or just be on the lookout for it when it releases. Here's our cover uh, page with Strange vs. Mordo. Table of contents here. Opening it up with the Strange Tales from 1994. Love that trading card art style. Who is that? Villagran. Okay. Very cool artwork with this painted style and this graphic novel type of uh, issue. So that's how we open up this volume. Let's get through this. And now we're on to some 90s goodness. I mean, you got Go Danny Ketch Ghost Rider as you open up here. Full pages, no borders, just chock full of art. Midnight Suns with Morbius here. Perfect timing on these Omnis. We got Vengeance action. Looks like Namor. 90s Doctor Strange. I've only read issues here and there. 
growing up. I, I never was one to have the funds to, to follow multiple runs as a kid. I followed as much Spider-Man and X-Men as I could. This looks dope, man. I am definitely down to jump into this and, and do a read-through, especially now that all three volumes are released. The art style's up my alley. Doctor Strange is about to hit theaters, and all these characters are more popular than ever now. So, uh, again, Marvel, great timing with these Omnis. Keep killing it. Let's see if there's any bonus material in the back worth mentioning. All right, so this uh, we have a pin up here, Doctor Strange and Spidey. Some more artwork. This looks like... I don't know what this is supposed to be. Oh, the ash can. This is probably the ash can. Yep, here we go. Some old articles. An interview with David Quinn. Looks like some house ads. And, of course, some interior arts and original art for covers. Swimsuit edition stuff. Doctor Strange getting his 15 minutes with the swimsuit. Very cool. All right, guys, next up, continuing to reprint the Dark Horse Star Wars material, Marvel Comics, putting out Star Wars The Empire Omnibus. Let's go ahead and take some overhead shots and take a look at the construction of this bad boy. And Marvel out here doing for Star Wars fans what they're doing for Conan fans, cranking out Omnibus, uh, either original material or reprinting the Dark Horse material. This is scheduled to be released on May 3rd. This is the regular cover, which looks amazing. There is a DM variant for this as well, which I'll put up on the screen. Retailing $125 with 992 pages. With the dedicated spine matching the other volumes. Collecting Star Wars Republic 78 through 80. Star Wars Purge. Star Wars Purge, the second to die. Then you have Hidden Blade, The Tyrant's Fist 1 and 2, Darth Vader and the Lost Command 1 through 5, Dark Times 1 through 17, Dark Times Blue Harvest 0, and Dark Times Out of the Wilderness 1 through 5, with Star Wars Darth Vader and the Ghost Prison 1 through 5. Dust Jacket, as always, we're just letting us know who the creative team was, giving us a biography on where we're at. I liked it. I liked the, the uh, gist of it with Darth Sidious with his new apprentice, Darth Vader. I've always heard great things about the uh, Dark Horse Star Wars universe. Here is a nice wraparound cover of Vader on the actual book itself. Looks awesome. And as you can see, man, even straight from the factory, it'll come damaged, man. Don't always blame your, your retailer. <laughs> Here goes the cover page. Looks great. Here's the credits. Table of contents here. Jumping up to issue one. So here we go. So like I said, uh, Dark Horse Star Wars always was uh, highly coveted by the fan base. Uh, awesome to see Marvel taking advantage of getting the rights back, reprinting all this classic material and these easy to digest omnibus volumes. I mean, they're not overly large. They're breaking them down by these different um, by these different volumes and different story arcs. Amazing artwork here. Like I said, what a time to be a Star Wars fan and a Conan fan with how many Omnis that these guys are cranking out here. So I don't know how you would have gotten this otherwise. I'm sure the Dark Horse stuff is becoming more and more out of print and out of reach, especially like thinking about the uh, Colossal Conan books and things like that. So uh, like I said, very cool that uh, Marvel is keeping this stuff alive. Let's go ahead and see what kind of bonus materials we have. We're getting the covers through uh, in between the issues here. I don't want to spoil the last page, but some great uh, variant covers here. L they look awesome. What is this? The Clone Wars Volume 9 cover. Wraparound cover for uh, the Lost Command hardcover. So some nice art, some designs here. Cover art, sketches for interior pages. So you get a good amount of bonus material here as well, which is impressive since you know Marvel didn't, published this originally so they did just you know include this everything they got their hands uh, on basically all right so i'm going to kind of do these together because marvel has been completing jason aaron's thor run in multiple formats as the omnibus approach so this volume five completes his entire run in trade paperback format the last haul i did i believe had the last ohc which was volume five all leading up to this volume one for the Jason Aaron Thor omnibus. This is one of my most anticipated ones. I haven't read his entire 
uh, arc. I read the beginning, the God Bomb, the God Butcher, Jane Foster stuff, and then somewhere along the lines, I, I teetered off there. Excited to jump back into this. Let's take a look at it now. All right, so let's look at the trade paperback first. This one's scheduled to be released on May 4th. It's the Complete Collection, Volume 5, Del Mundo, Ribic, Jason Aaron. Here's our spine. So, like I said, trade paperback, but the Complete Collections tend to be a little bit more on that thicker side. $40 retail price, collects Thor, issues 1 through 16, and King Thor 1 through 4, which was the last mini series here. So we'll just kind of go through this real quick, and then we'll look at the Omnibus. All right, here we go. Table of contents. And when it says Thor number one, so this is after the Jane Foster. So this is when Thor gets uh, his powers back. He gets the hammer back. And then it leads into the whole King Thor thing. And this played with that whole Thor's daughters and the three Thors uh, from past, present, and future at the same time. So there was a chunk of this between like this arc and the Jane uh, Foster stuff that I missed. This is Angela. So I think this is also when uh, she gets retconned to being Thor's, what is it, Thor's sister or relative or something along those lines. I never really followed that too closely. I mean, I liked Angela as a Spawn character. She was a uh, one of the most notable Spawn characters, and it kind of sucks that uh, they lost out. Gore the God Butcher with Loki, so it's epic when Gore comes back here. This is reminiscent of like that Wolverine X-Men cover, right? So, I mean, I'm, I'm a fan of Asad Ribic. I like his uh, kind of painted style. You know, I, I, I can excuse the flaws within, like, facial features and things like that because I just like his aesthetic overall. Uh, so, nice cover gallery in the back. Looks like it's giving us all the covers and cover sketches. But let's look at the Omnibus. All right, guys, so this comes out next month as well, April 27th. This is the regular cover. There is a DM variant here as well, which is the cover of issue number one of Jane Foster's Thor. But this is the Assad Ribbit cover, and this has 1,216 pages, retails $125. And then here is the spine in the back. Kind of did this a little bit different, but it collects Thor God of Thunder 1 through 25, Thor issue 1 through 8, Thor Annual 1, Thor's 1 through 4, and Mighty Thor 1 through 12. So that's everything collected in this volume. The inside of the dust jacket gives us uh, a brief biography on the story and, of course, of the creators. And then underneath you have the DM variant on the front here, which is a cool cover as well. I could go with either one. Spine is the same. And then you have a completely different image on the back here, the Joe Casada Thor. So you get all three options with this book. The great interiors are classy. Jane Foster on the front. And a gra again, great timing. Thor Love and Thunder is going to borrow heavily from this run. So to see um, the omnibus come out, origin of Gore the God Butcher, who is being played by Christian Bale, is it? Natalie Portman reprising her role as Jane Foster. And I think it's going to be cool to see her become Thor. The gore stuff is going to be crazy. And this is what I mean about Asad Ribic with that kind of landscape, environmental... Uh, environmental art that he does so well all right moving on not going to go too much into the story here it's been a while since i read it i would love to do a, a read through so i could really be refreshed i read these in single issues as they were coming out so what was this 2014 or so right around the time when i started getting back into reading comics but uh it was a great time to get back. This uh, run had just started. I think it was like Rick Remender's Venom had just started with Flash Thompson. But um, yeah, definitely uh, excited to jump into this and collect the rest of the series once uh, the next volume comes out. Let's see what kind of bonus materials we have here, if any. And yes, it looks like we have a little afterward by Jason Aaron. Combined covers by Asad Ribic. That's great. So we got a variant kind of design gallery in the back here. It goes on for a while, actually. Here we have some true variant covers. Umberto Ramos, Ron Garney, Nick Klein. And then we have, wow, a gang of uh, covers. Dale Keown, Jason Keith. Very cool. And then lastly, a late edition that just came in. We have She-Hulk by Peter David. Marvel has been printing so much Peter David material. And I think it's awesome, man. 
de definitely a legacy writer for Marvel Comics. She-Hulk's coming out on the MCU. We've got the Dan Slott, the John Byrne, and now here we are with uh, Peter Davis. So let's take a look at She-Hulk. She-Hulk is the latest one to come out. This has a release date of May 17th. As far as I've seen so far, this is the only cover. 552 pages, $75 cover price. Here's a good look at the spine. At first, I thought this was uh, a, new, a new printing of the Dan Slot one. Very similar color schemes here, which, I mean, it's She-Hulk, right? Collecting She-Hulk from the 2005 series, issues 22 through 38, plus She-Hulk Cosmic Collusion, X-Factor 33 and 34, Sensational She-Hulk 12, and some material from She-Hulk uh, Sensational issue 1. Inside of the dust jacket, as always, what's this story about? The, uh, a biography on the creative team. Very cool homage to uh, Incredible Hulk Annual 1 by um, Jim Steranko. Same spine. And then you have another She-Hulk image on the back here. Nice neon green interiors. I always enjoy reading She-Hulk stories. I mean, they always typically feel more on the lighthearted side. A um, little bit more of a comic relief. So, um, haven't read this one personally. So far, the art looks good. It looks big and bold. Nice detail to it. Uh, it looks like this is going to be a quick read, too. Might be something worth reading before the show comes out as well. Looks like she's up versus other gamma-powered monsters, as you would expect. I know they have a scroll tie-in story here as well. Yeah, here she goes right here. A little juggernaut appearance. Nice little surprise omnibus. I don't keep up with what's coming out as much as I used to. I just kind of... You know, what, what gets sent, and, and I keep an eye out on things that I really want. This one came out of nowhere. Like I said, it looks like a fun, quick read. Maybe I should do a quick review of this and uh, crank one out before the show comes out. That looks cr pretty cool, actually. But it looks like the type of She-Hulk that, that I like. Not that big, brolic one. They threw in some uh, old-school material here in the back. Peter David just has an old following from 2007 they dug up. Love this homage. Um... For the Marvel Zombies stuff, Ed McGinnis and Jason Keith. So not not too much on the bonus material here, but they give they give you a little something. All right, guys. So that's the Omnibus and Comic Book Haul. Let me know what you thought about the haul in the comments down below. What you think about the single issues? I just jumped on there early in the morning, messing around, looking at people's live streams, winning some auctions, winning some buy it now. So whatever was available is what I picked up. And let me know about the Omnis. What are you looking forward to most? I know you guys are excited about that Thor by Jason Aaron. And thanks for watching. Stay minty fresh. Peace.